What's going on guys? Today we're going to be doing a compression test on this guy. Um, built motor has about, uh, I want to say 25,000 miles at this point on it. It has a misfire on it. I think it's a coil pack, but I do just want to make sure that everything's good. Um, so yeah, I'll take you guys along for the ride and I'll show you how to do it. Alright, so for starters, we want the car, at least I prefer it this way, I prefer the car to be warm whenever I uh, do a compression test. Um, there's a lot of conflict um, over that. I mean, the only reason that you really wouldn't do it warm would be if maybe the car has a no-start issue or um, something of that sort. Uh, but for me, since my car starts fine, it runs decent, um, I'm going to do a warm compression test. And for that, I'm not really going to take it out to drive, I'm literally just going to Leave it in the garage for five minutes running, kind of get it, get it up to temp, um, and then I will go from there. So you can see the coolant temp is getting up. Um, usually I'll make it sit here till it's, I don't know, 140-ish, just, just so it's getting the engine, um, warmer than it, than it was sitting overnight, so. Alright, so we're almost getting there. It's at, uh, 136 right now, and I absolutely know that that is not the oil temperature. Uh, usually oil takes longer to heat up, obviously, than coolant would, but for me, at least this is verifying that my car is warmer than how it sat last night. Um, so hopefully it'll give me a, a, not necessarily a better reading, but just like a higher range of numbers. Um, so we'll just have to find out. All right. So first step I know I need to do is to take off this hot pipe here from the turbo. You will need a good compression tester to use. Uh, would not trust a cheaper alternative. All right. As you can see here, we have all the tools we need. I have my cobalt brushless drill. Um, 3 ace impact. Obviously you don't need this, but it comes in handy. I also have a just the Harbor Freight 3 ace ratchet. Um, I have a magnet because the spark plug socket does not have the, um, the rubber inside it any longer. Uh, that usually grips onto the spark plug to pull it up, so this works great for that. Um, the 11, the 10 mil, and then there's the 8 mil for the coil packs. So let's get started. As always, clean as a whistle in there. And then of course, stupid me replace these bolts with 10 mils, so we'll get those. Wait, what am I doing? Duh. What am I doing? I always forget I have this thing. Need a magnetic bowl. Now I'll just pull the coil packs off the spark plugs. Then we'll get our spark plug socket. Cylinder one, cylinder two, cylinder three, cylinder four. As you can see, they're all really white on the tip. Um, I'd honestly have to verify with a guide, but I'm pretty sure that means it's running pretty lean. Then we'll get our compression tester, and you have to find the right attachment uh, for 
your spark plug holes, which just so happens to be this guy. So then you just thread it in like so. Don't have to go crazy tight, just tight with your fingers. That way you can still get it out at the end. Um, then you'll get the quick connect fitting on the actual gauge. And all you do is connect it here, just like an air compressor. And once that's tight on there, all you'll do, set this up. I'm here by myself, so I don't have anybody that can read the gauge. So what I'll do is I'll keep cranking and we'll see where it ends up. All right, so this ended up for the better. Um, I'm glad that his compression tester has a super long hose because I actually can set it up here and watch it as I pump. So whenever we go to actually test the vehicle, um, for mine specifically, uh, whenever you compression test it, basically all you're going to do is put the key in it, put her in neutral with the e-brake on, and then you will depress the clutch and the gas um, all the way down at the same time and you will hold it as you crank that way no fuel will be squirting into the cylinder while you're cranking at that point you will watch the gauge and hopefully it'll read the numbers that I want to see so let's try and then when you actually start cranking you will crank until the needle pretty much stops moving um, upwards in PSI All right, let's see what the first one did. One, well, we'll call that 168. That is actually not bad. Um, this does have CP pistons in it, so it is a um, stock compression engine. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if the other ones are higher than this, but it's a good start. All right, so it's now in cylinder two, as you can see, and I have the gauge set up here. This is the one I'm having the misfire on. So let's hope that it's not the engine, but I would not be surprised. And if it is, so be it. I would rather find out this way. All right, clutch whole way down, gas whole way down, crank it. Oh, basically exactly what the last one was, around 167, 166 ish. So, right in range with that one. Let's check the other ones. All right, cylinder three, clutch whole way down, gas pedal whole way down, crank it till the needle stops. It's actually a lot higher than I thought. 177-ish, um, around there, if you can see that. So, awesome. Um, now we relieve that pressure, and we'll move to cylinder four. Cylinder four is in, gauge is set up. Crank it till the needle stops. That one is 172, so, Across the board, I believe it's one, what, 168, 166, 170, what, 177, 172? Not bad, not bad at all. That's a quick think here. That is a 5% variance between cylinders, which is very, I mean, that's that's accepted. Um, none red low. Um, usually if you have an issue with a ring or so, it's gonna be way down in this range here. Um, all of mine are within 160 to 180, so. Uh, I think she's solid still. Wow, that's a good surprise. At this point though, it is always good to check your spark plug gap. If you have them out, it's always good to just inspect them. Uh, mine do not look that great. Uh, the gap looks fine, but the tips are, if you can see, they're white. Really not a, uh, I don't know, it's not what you want to see. Usually you want to see a little more black on the bottom part there. But, um, it's... Like I said, compression's still good, so at least I've got that going for me. So yeah, let's put this thing back together. Also a good thing to know, um, whenever you're doing this, I also question my head gasket being at least partially bad. I just want to verify basically that it's still good. It's not, obviously, I just t took that off for the first time in three weeks and it's still completely full, so it's not like it's burning coolant or anything. But I do just want to go through, I'm getting a retune, I do want to go through um, and make sure everything's okay before I do that. This is my old three and a half inch. That's actually going to be going away. I'm going to be going to this guy here, a four inch HTP. Got rid of the stupid bypass valve um, circ tube. I can finally cap the uh, peep cover vent to the intake. And then I just have that for the EBCS. Can't wait to put that in, get a full retune with that. Honestly, the retune's probably only gonna be for a couple months. Uh, getting precision 
goodness here soon. To make sure the head gasket is okay, I also borrowed a coolant pressure tester. So with that, it's just a hand pump, but you'll find basically whichever fitting fits your car. So I believe it's gonna be this guy. Um, you're gonna put it in, you're gonna connect this guy up to it, and you're gonna basically hand pump it and pressurize uh, like around 20 PSI uh, through your coolant system. I'm probably gonna do like 15. And then basically all you're going to do is, there's a little gauge on this guy. All you're gonna do is check that gauge and if it drops at all over time, you probably have a leak somewhere in your system. Not saying it's a head gasket, but you probably have a leak. So I'm gonna get this all hooked up and I will try it out. This is a learning experience for me because I've never actually done this either. So we'll learn together. So I literally just hand pumped it. Um, literally took three pumps, got it up to 15 PSI. And I'm just gonna let it sit there for about, I don't know, five to 10 minutes and I will be back to show you what it's like later. 448 when I leave. We're actually going to check. It is now 4.55. Looks about right where it was, so we should be all right. I'm just going to double check, though, down in the cylinders. Um, if it does seep past through, you normally the piston tops will be wet. Um, that one looks dry. So does that one. That one looks dry, and that one looks dry, too. Uh, just a bunch of crud on top, but no shininess. Uh, so we should be good. Awesome, so now we really will get this put back together. Kinda nervous about this, cause I have to release, or relief all the pressure um, from this, doing this. Oh. Okay, it likes to drip apparently. Cool. Oh, awesome. Okay, so relieving the pressure actually. Oh God, okay. I have to relieve it somehow, I guess. Might as well do it all. Oh god. Oh god. That's a lot of coolant. Oh god. Hold on, just a little bit more. It's down to almost zero. Alright, I think that's it. I think that releases it. So basically all you have to do now is undo it. Like that. Oh my. Yep, that has a bunch in it. All right, so that's done. So we'll move that to the side. There. This guy needs to come off, so this will be fun. There it goes. All right, now we lift this off. Oh, my. Well, that sucks, but at least we know. The more you know. Put that guy on. Now that I know that I don't really have a uh, spark blood issue, I'm running 28 PSI. Um... I know the gaps are good. They all look good. I can't find my spark plug gapper, so we're just gonna go with that. They're good. Um, I can always pull it back off uh, at another time and double check if I'm having issues. But so far, they're okay. Um, for this, we're just gonna basically do the opposite of what we had to do to bring it out. So we'll put that guy on the, the magnet there, not drop it, and put it into the cylinder here. Just try to twist it, but I doubt it's going to twist, so it's going to be hard to get off. Normally, you'll just have to kind of rub it off on the side to get it to drop. That guy goes down in there. Always thread it with my hands first. I never, never trust power tools to do it. Um, personal preference, I guess, but that's how I was taught. She hand threaded them in. Now grab this. And tighten it. I like to go snug, um, but definitely not uh, crazy tight. Um, not not as snug as I'm doing. I'll do a little more than that, but I only have one hand right now, so I can't. Uh, so I'll come back around here. Basically, all you want to do is give it nice little extra snug there, snugness, nice little tug. Nothing crazy. You don't need it to be crazy. I've seen plenty of horror stories with spark plugs at these cars. Just like the Triton V8 in the Ford, the 5.4, the spark plugs, they don't blow out, but I've seen people with these cars, literally the threads get caught in the head. So, no need to over torque. Not saying that it was their fault that they over torqued it. Sometimes it's just the plug manufacturer, but I always like to be safe. Now we'll put on the assorted coil packs. With this issue, I was having a cylinder two misfire, which will be this guy here. Instead of putting my cylinder two coil pack on that, back on, 
I'm gonna put all the rest on and then I actually have a spare in the attic. Well, a couple spares in the attic here. So all you're gonna do with these, is just exactly like we removed them, just push them back on there. They'll just slide right over. Just like that and we will go grab the other one. Random kitty. Oh look, random brake pedal in the stairway. How do you know you're a Mazda Speed owner? Oh, as you have entire inventory in your attic. All right, let's find the coil packs here. Walk right by them. Take one of these, hopefully they're still good. Actually, get one that's not numbered. Um, with all these other coil packs that I had, I basically did the coil spring stretch mod not really much of a mod. Basically, it just gives you a better chance of having a, a better spark, better contact with the uh, spark plug to the coil pack. There's a spring inside these guys. Um, basically, you just pop this off and you stretch the spring. Um, I'll do that for you here real quick. See, so you have the coil pack here. You'll grab it. Just It, it should just kind of pull apart. All you need to do is make sure it doesn't fly anywhere. Just like that. Oh, there's actually grease on this one. That's I've actually never seen that. So just take this, and you're going to want to basically just stretch it. Just to make a little better contact with the spark plug. I only want it to be a little bit longer. It doesn't have to be crazy. Usually it's you don't want the middle part to stretch as much. Just go along the edges. So that actually should be plenty. Um, don't want to overdo it. Now if you do want to get really serious, which I'll probably have to do here soon... You can actually get copper rod, measure it out, and actually use that instead of um, a coil spring. You just press that back in. So I'll just put all these bolts back together and tighten them down. And we should be good. Again, with these, I stress do not over torque them. I actually had a coil pack on my other valve cover, the bolt on it uh, stripped out. These are aluminum, they're not going to take to torque very easily. And since I'm using a 3 8 ratchet, you really don't want to torque much. I mean, literally just snug. That's it. That's all you need. Nothing crazy. Let's get this plug out of the way. Nothing crazy, just nice and snug. 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 Bit of a pain to squeeze in there, just because that coupler is always kind of tight to work with. But all we got to do now is tighten up all the clamps here. Again, can't stress how important this thing is. So nice to have. Everything's all buttoned up. So we're gonna just start up, make sure it runs all right. Thank you guys for watching. If you want more videos like this, just let me know. Uh, this is kind of a new style for me, but uh, if you want more instructional videos or me just talking about the car, just let me know. Um, I can make a video on the specifics of it. Uh, just give me suggestions in the comments and make sure to leave a like. Subscribe if you want more like this. Thanks, guys.